and start reading it and then start the game. Yeah. So yeah, you're so helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So someone wrote in and said, what, it's, what is it like for a lively woman of 55 to have five boyfriends? I'm thinking I would like this, but don't know how to go about it. How do I meet and select the right guys for me? And I think it's a really fun question. This is Kathy Varjuli from the IntimacyDojo.com. And Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com. And we're broadcasting live or recorded from our hotel lair. In San Diego. San Diego. All right. Yes. What's your answer? Well, a I, lively 55-year-old <laughs> who'd like to date five men. Oh, well, I'm 50, I'm not 55 yet, so, um, but I love the question. But you will be someday. I will be. I'm 47 right now. And I remember a conversation you and I had when I, soon after I met you, and I, I'm a big woman, and I would think I was 40, I must have been 44 at the time. Mm-hmm. And I said, in my experience, the middle-aged big women are the ones that sit on the side of stuff and don't have anyone engaging with them. And you said, in my world, the ones that want to are in the middle of everything having a wild time. And I was like, mm, I think I was very suspicious of your story and, and not sure it was true. And it hasn't yet, panned out to be true. It has, actually. Like, if you want to and you're willing to use your words and ask for stuff, I have two lovers in their 30s right now that, and we just have a really fun time, like. It doesn't have to be, you know, what they stereotypically say. You have to be 22 in a size 2 to to have people that want to have fun with you. Um, you get to be who you are and enjoy your body and enjoy other people's bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, so the number one advice I'd give you is to make sure there's not a lot of stories about what you can get. Because it still comes up. I'll get shy or retired and I'll be like, oh, I'm, you know, 47, I'm big. And... When I'm in that space, it's really hard to engage with people. That noise is so loud that I'm not connecting. And what do you do to, to turn the volume down on that noise? Well, again, this is your advice, and it worked really well. I tell somebody. I'm like, I'm feeling really insecure right now. I'm mm-hmm. feeling like I'm too big and too old to be attractive. And I, if you can say it not from the point of, vict- of a victim point of view, then sometimes I need to go to a friend and, like, I really need to vent for a little while. Or a therapist. Not that you need to go to a therapist, but some of you will have friends who aren't yeah. good listeners. I hang out with you. Kathy so has me, and I'm a good listener. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you may want to, you know, just share with someone. But just telling someone you're feeling shy or awkward mm-hmm. can often the other person often says, oh, me too, and the great dialogue starts. Yeah, that's great cocktail party event stuff is go up to people and talk about what you're afraid to talk about or what's going on for you. And a lot of people who are also standing there kind of looking awkward will be like, me too. Yes. And you let the cat out of the bag, and then all of a sudden you can laugh about social dynamics being just like seventh grade. And <laughs> do you have four friends? Because I'd like to date all of you. Right now. And I'm 55. <laughs> so I'm going to steal something that Reed said in the Relationship TEDx program last weekend. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Um, he said, go out and do things that thrill you, and you'll be thrilling. And you'll more likely meet people that thrill you as well. So uh, I used to stay home a lot, and I wasn't dating. Because, you know, unless someone parachuted through my living room, they weren't going to meet me. Except when I went to the grocery store, the car, you know, car mm-hmm. replacement. And there's some cool people that go grocery shopping, I'm sure, but I wasn't meeting the ones that really thrilled me. Mm-hmm. But if you want grocery shopping on non-monogamy night at your local grocery store. They didn't have that in Dallas that no, I'm aware of. But you could start that meetup. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is, if you want to meet some really cool people... Go out and do things that you've always wanted to do. And sometimes it means going out past your comfort zone. And it can take courage. Bring a friend if you want, but start. Yeah, but this woman is asking, I'm assuming it's a woman. I don't know that she yeah. gendered her, her missive to us. But, like, she wants five boyfriends. Yeah. So. Go on OkCupid okay and say you want five boyfriends. Exactly, because she but doesn't know where go, to go. So you got to give her advice. Yeah, but where also does she go, go? Go out and go to different. Talk to her. Rooms, go to different meetups. Um, go on OkCupid or Plenty of Fish. Say what you really want. And this is what so many people do wrong in profiles. And Reed helped me so much with that. Because I wasn't saying what I wanted. I was trying to be really innocuous and hope not to scare people away. 
And then you get no one. Because it was boring. I've read it since then. I'm like, oh my God. You get people who are into innocuity. Yes. So say that I want to have five boyfriends. If you Would want... you like to be one of the five lucky men? Yes. Yes, to share my bed. Yes. Maybe not all at the same time. Maybe. But maybe. You know, it's all okay. Is what you're into. Yes. So, you know, just embrace who you are and share who that is and what you really want. And, you know, if you get three, that's still really cool. Yeah, there's maybe. good odds there. Yeah. Why, did you, why is five? Why not six? Why not seven? Why limit yourself? Why limit yourself? <laughs> Maybe it's one for every day of the week. Oh, and then you have like underwear because you might need the weekends off. Now. It's like under Monday yeah, through to Friday so, underwear. Wait, so you don't wear underwear on the weekends? No. Sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. T J I F, my friends. T J I F. So basically, can I chime in now? Yes, <laughs> I mean, I was charming in the whole time. Um, so the the only way you're going to know what it's like is if you experience it. And you might never get to five, or you might shoot way past five. Who knows? Um, but start hanging out or going to groups or being on um, Facebook groups or you know meetup groups, those kinds of situations where people are, are exploring mm -hmm. non-monogamy or dating a lot of people consecutively um, or con congruently. Con consec no. con congruently. Con consecutively. Consecutively means that one after the other. Okay, so not that, but but that's not we congruent. Had, we had it's not, yeah, but it's not congruent. This was happening in another video. I'll think about it in a minute. You come back. Um, but you're so go check out places where people who are already exploring or thinking about exploring non-monogamy uh, in whatever way it looks like, um, where they hang out, and then go and and just because somebody's at that group doesn't mean you should be dating them. Yeah. Um, or seeing them regularly, you can date them to see if you want to see them more. Because mm -hmm. that that was the old version of dating, and no one. Yeah, that's the dating. You know, when you think of boyfriend, you might want to reevaluate like what that looks like. Because it might be someone that once a month you call for a play date. Mm -hmm. You know, like what does that what What do you need to have to be happy? Yeah, but, versus but, what other people think you should but have. Going to the gym thinking you're going to pick up somebody who's going to be okay with you having four other boyfriends. It's not the best use of your time because then you're, you're spending a lot of your energy trying to convert everybody. Yeah. And really, you want to already be preaching to the converted. And that means going to the watering holes, the way that I talk about it. But like you're dating your species. Go to the places where the people that you want to meet already are at. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's going to be polyamory, non-monogamy, swinging, you know, B BDSM and, and kink. You know, places that are... Um, if you're into BDSM and King. Yeah. Places that are already outside of the box of, of traditional relationships. And I know a lot of monogamous, kinky people, too. It's not... But, like, you're looking for people who are thinking about relationships differently and already looking at non-monogamy, or that's an open discussion in the community. Yeah. And then you've got all, you've got workshops and things like, you know, and, and retreats like Polypalooza... And Loving More has really interesting um, uh, gatherings and things like that. Burning Poly Man. Living. Burning Man has a lot of non-monogamous and monogamous people, too. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to be going in those directions. OkCupid, okay, their algorithm and how they run their site is better for non-monogamous mm -hmm. people. Plenty um, of Fish is not bad. Plenty of Fish is not bad. Things like Tinder and whatnot. Um, again, if you're 55, you're probably not using Tinder. Um, but Tinder is more of a hookup app, which in doesn't really vet for people who are good at non-monogamy. Mm -hmm. They may just be hooking up with lots of different people. And that's okay. It and that's okay. But depends like, on what you mean by boyfriend. Okay, Cupid, Facebook groups about polyamory, that kind of stuff. Go there. Let us know how it goes. We and, hope that and if you're one of those five lucky guys, let us know how it goes too. Leave yeah, a leave comments. Yay. That was a fun question.